Hey YouTube, this is Rose, Pretend to Rose. I'm going to give you a couple little tips just to step up your life a little bit. You ever feel a little inferior around certain people? They use bigger words. They got their crap together. They really do. You know, they get their goals. They're always smashing those goals. They're always got that extra income coming in. Those are the people you want to hang with. Let me tell you, they're going to teach you stuff in the long run. Sorry, I was just outside, but it was way too windy to do, do a video out there. So I don't know how the light is in here. But you want to put yourself with people that is going to change your life in the long run. So... You always got your friends, no matter what. I have friends that are the nickel and dimers. Love them dearly. They're close to my heart. Very sweet. I learn a lot from them. But then I have friends that know what they're doing. They have their rental incomes. They have their investments. They know how to do the all the stuff on the internet that, you know, that's making them money. I learn from them. I hang out with them. We go out. We have a good time. You know, it's about going out and having fun. You're not using them. You're learning from them. You know, I'm always in that learning state. And let me tell you. Read anything you can get your hands on. When I first started learning about money, I read every book that I could. Every book. I learned about budgeting. I learned about uh, having no debt. How to totally erase that debt. I did whatever I could. And I followed something out of that book. I took the best thing I could out of that book and I followed it to the T. Changed my life. It really did. So you want to start hanging with people that are definitely going to... You get this friend over here that's good with the goals and affirmations. This friend over here that's great with the rental properties. Start telling them, say, hey, I want to learn a little bit about this stuff. I have no clue how to do any of it, but I want to learn. I want to go learn how to flip houses. I have no knowledge on building stuff. But let me know. Let me tell you. Somebody out there does. Somebody out there is going to take their time out to help you. And they're going to change your life. I had a friend years ago. His name is Bob. Can't think of his last name. But real sweetheart of a man. He was much older than me. And somebody told me, hey, if you want extra work, he can give you extra work. So I went over to his place. I asked him about it. And he said, yeah, he goes, you can go paint parking line, parking lines, paint parking lines out there in a parking lot for it. You know, I'm like looking at him. I was like, how'd you come up with some kind of a job like that? <laughs> you know, he goes, I just thought it up and started doing it. I was like, you just thought it up and started doing it? He said, yeah. He goes, I had to kind of do my research and find out exactly what to do when I just started doing it. Well, he didn't just have that business. He had about 10 businesses. And he did a little bit of everything. He used to mulch skids. I didn't even know that was a thing. He would go around all these properties that were throwing out skids and he would take them back and he would mulch it. And then he would sell the mulch. People bought it up. He had that business. He just had all these businesses. He had rental incomes. He had like all this stuff. All the time. Multiple incomes. He always had all kinds of kids in town that were willing to work. They'd be hitting him up for jobs all the time. Because he paid and he paid good and he paid on the day. Cash. Give you that money. You do the job. You get You get paid. And if he didn't have nothing for you, he would find another job in town that had people that needed people. And he'd be like, hey, I got these kids that want to work. 
You think you got something for them? He would literally come and get us, wake us up out of bed, and make us go to work. My sister worked for him for a long time, and he used to do that to her all the time. Oh, my goodness. You know, I learned so much from him, and I learned you don't have to be in one position all your life for that. You can go out and do anything. So I had my own window washing business. I done security. I delivered pizzas. I did it all. I had a house cleaning business, and I did that for quite a few years. And that I did on a fluke that a neighbor got sick and could not go clean the house. And she asked me to cover her cover for her. The people were very impressed. So then she had so much work, she couldn't take it on. So she started giving me some of her really good clients. And it just took off from there. It actually got to the point where I was cleaning buildings and facilities for other people. I made money. It was money that I needed. Now, like I said, I didn't know nothing. I felt a little inferior. Just, But I was willing to learn. And I was willing to go out and about and do whatever. So when they say flip that couch, yeah, I've probably done it. <laughs> I've flipped all kind of furniture. I used to love doing that. That was one of my favorites. You know, there's so many things that you can do that will change your life if you only take a chance and step out there and do it. So I do read a lot. I read just about anything I get my hands on. It could be a history. It could be novels. It, For whatever reason, I'm drawn to the history books. I never liked them in school, but all of a sudden, now I love them. Uh, anything you can get your hands on, you will change your life. Just take a couple of minutes and say, I'm not a reader. That's okay. Take three pages a day and read three pages. Don't matter how short those pages are or how long those pages are. Read three pages. It will change. Something up here is going to click. And all of a sudden, you're going to be like, oh, I can't believe I did that. I can't believe I did that. There are so many people out there that started with nothing. So, I can't think of the guy that made the shampoo from Hawaii. Uh, Paul, whatever. He had no money. He was homeless. He was shampooing with flowers and stuff. They found that he did his own. He made his own shampoo. And somewhere out of the blue, he got the point where, hey, this stuff works pretty good. I'm going to start trying to sell this. And he did door to door. Look him. He has his own business. And it's huge. People all over the world buy his products. You know, anything can change at a moment's notice. You want to, I did, I made candles. I wound up selling my whole kit and caboodle supply all in one shot because I found out I'm really sensitive to strong smells. Although I enjoyed the process, I didn't enjoy the smell. And I had this one huge cupboard. I loved this cupboard. I kept all my supplies in there. To this day, even years after of not doing it, it still smells. <laughs> It's at my sister's house now. <laughs> you you can change your life. You just have to step up to the point and do it. Anything. Think about what you want to do. It could be anything. And let me tell you how easy it is. You want to print t-shirts? You can come up with your own designs. And you can go on print on demand on the internet. They will do everything for you. Everything, all you got to do is sell them on your website, sell them on your, your YouTube channel, sell them on whatever, sell them on Facebook Marketplace, and then your orders go through print-on-demand, print and they ship them out, they print them, they ship them out, and everything, and you get money. All you did was design them and set up a contract. That's it. That's how easy it is. You can do anything, anything you want that will change your life. 
So you're a gardener? Build yourself a little fruit stand, a little plant stand out in front of your house. Sell off some of those plants and see how quick people buy them up. You know, if you're good at collecting seeds and whatever, start enveloping that stuff and selling off your seeds if you want. Say, oh, I got these seeds, you know, put them out there in your fruit stand. People will buy that stuff. You just have to really start thinking about what you want to do with your life. Make those goals. Write them down. Don't just think, oh, this is my New Year's resolution. This is what I'm going to do. No, write it down and say, this is my goal. I will achieve this. I will get it done. Put a deadline date on it. Now, not everybody gets makes their deadline date, but you'll be surprised by your deadline date. How much you got done. And if you have to extend your deadline date, that's okay. Not everybody's perfect. Believe me. I have goals that I wrote out 20 years ago that I never accomplished. But you know what? They're still written and they're still in my goal journal. I've accomplished a lot <laughs> over those years and I've accomplished some really big goals. But let me tell you, it changed my life. You know, I wrote in a journal one time that I wanted to be a life coach. I wrote down something like 1-800-LIFE-COACH. I, I don't remember what it was, but I wrote it down. 20 years later, I found that old journal, and I'm going back through it. This was after I became a certified life coach. I had totally forgotten about that. 20 years went by, but somewhere in the back of my subconscious, it said, hey, you want to be a life coach? You wrote it down. This is the magic of writing things down. It happened. It took 20 years because I forgot about it, and I never set any, never stepped down my goals to work towards that goal. I just wrote it down. It changed my life. Start making yourself some list of things you want to accomplish. Do a bucket list. And I mean, not just like, go bungee jumping off some cliff. Not go fly an airplane. Do things that you really want to do in life that you know you can look back and say, hey, I really accomplished that. I've been all over the U.S. I've been to 48 states. I've been to Puerto Rico twice. You know, things. I wrote these things down and I wound up with a job that I didn't even apply for. Believe it or not, one of my guards <laughs> filled out an application for me and sent it in to a company I didn't even know about. These people call me. I'm like, how would you even get my name? They're like, oh, we're flying to Harrisburg to meet you. I'm like, what? So, and they said, well, so-and-so sent this to us, and we definitely want you to come on board with our company. I did meet up with him meet up with these people, and I did get that job, and it changed my life. They were like flying me to Puerto Rico and stuff. You will never believe the stuff that will happen if you put that little effort into it. Write it down. Write it down. Make yourself a list today. Hang out with the friends that know how to make money. You hang out with the people that you know will get you to a different spot. You, you know. They don't care that you're not as smart as them. They want you as a friend. You want them as a friend. Go hang out with them. They're having a cook out there. They're barbecuing. And they ask you to come over for a barbecue. And you're like. Oh, I'm not as smart as these people. I'm not like them. Go hang out with them. Have fun. You'd be surprised. It could change your life in a split second. And if you're having a movie day, watch some of those old movies that inspire you. Really watch an inspirational movie. Because somewhere in there, it clicks. And it says, oh my goodness, I could do that. 
I'm a hustler. I can do that. I can go out and detail cars. I'm really good at cleaning. You know, people charge a lot of money to get detailed cars. I noticed in little areas like I got going on here, I don't know of anybody detailing cars here. They they may be, but I don't know of any. You know, it may be something that you're really good at. And you can charge a lot of money. Especially if you're the only one in the area doing it. People will hit you up. People will definitely be like, oh yeah, that's what I want done. So I noticed in this area we have a lot of the old Victorian houses. Beautiful old houses here. Absolutely love them. They have a ton of room in them. Lots of rooms. Just, I want to flip houses. I want to fix them up, rent them out. I got my lifts going. I got my friends. I'm just doing what I want to do. Still got to get together with kiosk here. We got to do a video, buddy. You got to hang out with it. Kiosk, he is like the most intelligent person. He is so smart. I could learn a ton from him. I watch his videos all the time. And he's in my area. <laughs> That's what's nice. He's from the area. So he already knows the area really well. You probably see him in my comments all the time. He's always leaving really meaningful comments. But let me tell you. You can change your life in a heartbeat. You just got to put in a little effort. Pick up that book. Start reading it. Start doing the things that you know will make a change. Even, it's a, even if it's a small change. You know what? When I first started out, one of my worst things was organizing. You know, things just went wherever. None of my furniture matched. I wasn't into any of that kind of stuff. None of that kind of stuff interested me. You know, I was that outdoor girl. I like camping and going out and shooting guns and, you know, just having fun. Sitting around the bonfires. I was that outdoor. I was always outside cutting wood with my dad. I was always outdoors all the time. I was rarely inside. So, you know, when I grew up, when I first got married, we were out on the boat all the time, living out on the island in the summers and in the winters. We lived in at the house and or out at the campsite. We were just everywhere. You know, I had to learn. I had to learn some organizational skills. We didn't have YouTube. I could not look this stuff up. You know, I had to buy a book. I had to ask for guidance. I had to ask my neighbor to come over and help me. I'd be like, I have no clue where to go with 80 million socks. My kids have 80 million socks. Where do I go with them all? She was like, throw them out. Make sock monkeys. She, she had a ton of ideas. But she she did. She really helped me organize. She changed my life. You know, and I had my aunt. My aunt would come over. She helped me organize and decorate my house. And then it got me interested. Things that I wasn't interested in before, all of a sudden I found out I was suddenly interested in. Who knew I was interested in decorating? I'm not the decor person. I have no clue about that stuff, you know, but I do now. I'm like, oh, this is a lot of fun. I didn't realize I could pick one spot in my house and make it my vacation spot. Have you ever had a vacation spot in your house? That one perfect chair in that area with your little flowers and your little diffuser that with that ambient glow to it, you know, and your, you got whatever. It's your little spot, your little nook. That's what you need. You need one of those where you can concentrate on your list. <laughs> Make those lists. Write stuff down. Start your journals. You do whatever you want. You want to start a business? Pressure washing. Oh, my goodness. You could go out and pressure wash cars at a, at a car dealership. 
Well, you might want to be bonded and insured before you start doing that. I don't know what the laws are in your state. But pressure washing houses, pressure washing driveways, people will pay for that. Go buy yourself a pressure washer and go around and see which neighbor wants your, their driveway pressure washed. These things will change your life and it may start a business for you. Down the road, you may be doing something that will be unique, different, that nobody else does in your area. And it may change your life. It may start a hardcore business with a lot of, let's say you wind up with 30 employees. And, you know, and you might have to hire an accountant to do all that tax and payouts and, you know, I'm not good with that stuff. I'd hire somebody in a heartbeat. You never know. You might start flipping houses and hire somebody, you know, a run-of-the-mill carpenter that comes in. That person can wind up being your best friend for life. You never know. They could marry you or they could marry your sister. You never know. It, it Things change as you go. It just goes and gets better and gets better and it gets better as you go. Start writing stuff down. Read three pages a day. Start looking at your friends and saying, who knows what? Oh, this guy knows so much about cars. You know, maybe I should really learn how to change my oil by myself. It's really not that hard. Most people are so, you know, they've never done it before. They're scared to do something. They're afraid they're going to mess something up. Change your life dramatically. Do something. Anything. So today you might start and say, hey, I'm going to organize this one little spot in my house. I'm going to write down my list. What I'm going to do today. I've got my little list going. And I'm just going to check it off as I go. Or if I do extra stuff, I'm going to write it on the list. And then check it off and say, I did that also. Your list may grow, but it's something extra you did and you put it down there. That way you can see at the end of the day, you accomplished a lot. If you didn't, if you start a small list, add to it what you do. Let's say, okay, I have to stop doing this so I can go make dinner. Right, make dinner on there and check the list after it's done. That way you can go back at the end of the day and say, wow, I can't believe I accomplished all of that. I accomplished a lot more in one day than what I thought I ever would. So back to the fruit stand. You could sell seeds out there in envelopes. You could sell house plants. You could sell potted tomatoes, you know, or tomatoes that you picked out of your garden. You could do anything like that. Put a table out there and put out some baskets with some stuff in it. You'd be surprised. Not only will people buy it, but people come back and say, hey, do you got any more of those, you know, cucumbers? Oh, my goodness, they were so good. You'd be surprised where it goes. You might just start off with a little tiny cardboard table out in front of your house and wind up with a huge fruit stand at the flea market that everybody goes to. You know, where you make hundreds and hundreds of dollars in one day. You never know where it's going to wind up until you do it. Now, I have a friend, and he would go around those flea markets, and he would offer to build stands for them, and they'd pay him. They would pay him to come in and build specific stands. He was good at that kind of stuff. It was a good way for him to make extra cash flow. He had a great 40-hour-a-week job that he did. He made good money at it, but he was bored at home. He wanted something to do, and he liked having the extra cash flow. You can do anything. Put your mind to it. You're good at painting and drawing stuff? Buy up some old glass windows and design them. You know, paint something on them, put them out in front of your house for sale. You'd be surprised how many people will stop and buy that kind of stuff. You're a good artist? Go to an art show. 
you know, where you set up your own little stand. You'd be surprised. So my cousin, Tony, she made, uh, like those little Hallmark cards, uh, postcards. She's made her own coloring books. She's a wonderful artist. Does such a great job. I just love her artwork. Ag absolutely fabulous. She kind of got that Picasso thing going on. <laughs> the kids loved it. When they were growing up, she would bring them their, you know, her coloring books. And, or she would send them in with my mom, and my mom would give it to the kids. The kids absolutely loved them. Uh, the kids, I think Corey still has one or two of her old ones. These were things that you could do. You'd be surprised. Look it up. Good at writing children's stories? There's a huge presence for online. People writing stories want to do it online or want to write a book and start a book? Do it, do it, do it. It's huge right now. People will buy that stuff up. Coffee table books. I keep telling Side Hustle Inspiration, if you're listening, buddy, He's got these photos of graffiti from New York and Philadelphia, and he knows all these artists. Make yourself a coffee table book. Start selling that stuff online. Oh, my goodness. People love that stuff. People would buy it up. You could do anything in your life that you want to. You just got to put your mind behind it. You've got to be like, okay. I don't know what to do, but I can find somebody that does. I don't know how to start a network. I don't know how to network with people, but you know somebody that does. You got to start finding them and hanging out with them. Make them your best friend. Learn what you can. They will treat you look like gold, and you will treat them like gold. Let me tell you. You might wind up with the best friend for life that will always be there for you no matter what. You gotta be loyal. You gotta be faithful. You gotta be loving. You can't use people. You can't just use them. But you can let them know. People love teaching people and people love helping others out. Let them know. I want to learn this. I have no clue what I'm doing. I really want to learn. People will step up to the plate. And they will take their time out and help you. You'd be surprised. If they don't, they know somebody that can. <laughs> or they know where to start. They'll be like, start here. Start learning about this first. You know, they'll give you guidance. Take it. So, when you hang out with the $5 people, that's what you earn is $5. Keep that in mind. When you hang out with the $50,000 people, guess what you're going to start earning? $50,000. Keep that in mind. When you start hanging out with the millionaires, guess what you're going to start earning? A million dollars. Keep that in mind. You know, as I say, I'm sitting here in my Carhartt jacket and my Avalanche shirt. I'm all bundled up today. I was outside. It was really cold. I came in and started filming before I took my coat off. That's why I'm still sitting here in it. But you know what? You'd be surprised. Go to those networking events. Any kind of networking event you can. You want to learn about running property? Start going to those networking events. Meet people with the same interest. And then make friends with them. Socialize with them. If you have business cards, take your business cards. If you don't, take a tablet and a pen. Write down names and phone numbers. Make sure you give them your name and phone number. Definitely meet as many people as you can. And then stay in contact with them. Call them up once a week and say, hey, you want to go grab a coffee? Yeah. A dollar coffee at a restaurant? Sit down, talk to them for about 20 minutes. You'd be surprised where it goes. You might just wind up with a brand new business partner that you didn't even know, that you didn't even consider before. You don't know where it's going to go. I have written down people's names and phone numbers on napkins 
I have kept them. I've called them up. I've talked with them. I found out what their interests were. And then I learned as much as I could about their interests so I could keep that communication going. You you have to keep going. You have to you have to step up to the plate any way that you can. Motivate yourself any way you can. Network with people any way you can. So you got your different bars in town. You got your local, you know, biker bar. You got your local police officer bar where all the, the law hangs out at. Then you got your bar where the lawyers and the judges hang out at. Who do you think you're going to get the most out of? The Where the lawyers and judges go to, go to drink their beer. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe a little bit more expensive to drink there. But I'll tell you what. You're going to get more out of that experience. You're going to have fun any place that you go. But let me tell you, you'd be surprised. Although you go to the biker bar, you're going to find your carpenters and stuff like that that you really need if you're going to be flipping houses or renting out properties and stuff like that. You'll meet people no matter where you go. Get out to every event you can. Always carry your business cards with you. If you don't have business cards... Make some up. There, you can go on that Vista.com or whatever. Make yourself up some. You're thinking, oh, well, people don't really use business cards anymore. Uh, let me tell you, I do not only do I just hand out one. I hand out two when I give somebody a business card. Hey, if you know about anybody else that might be interested in life coaching or might be into watching my YouTube channel, Here's, here's a second card for you to hand out to a friend. I always hand out two. I never hand out just one. I give two at a time. If I go into a thrift store and they have a bulletin board there, I put my business card up there. I Every time, no matter where I'm at, you'd be surprised. Now, it might be three years, I might get two people watching my show. Or I might get... One person out of 10 years that calls me and be like, hey, I'm really interested in this. How do I get, biz you know, on your website and get going? And it happens. It takes time. But I'm telling you, it grows. Every little step grows. You learn from that step. Now, I've tried everything over the years. I've tried making my own t-shirts. I would use print on demand or I'd... Hire my daughter. She's really good at stuff like that. But, uh, you learn. You definitely learn by doing. You try it. You figure it out. And somehow, some people just find out, oh, no, I really enjoy this process. I really enjoy doing it myself. And they make a huge business out of it. Step up to the plate. If you're feeling a little infuriator about inferior about something, find somebody who can teach you. Some find somebody who can step you up a little bit. You'd be surprised. You would be surprised where it takes you. Now, some people it takes twenty years to change. Twenty years. That's okay. It's Everybody does it in their own way, their own time. And some of us have to learn the hard way. It's just how we are. That's okay, too. But if you know you want to do something that's going to change your life, you got to start somewhere, and you got to start now. Read those three pages a day. Say, I'm not a reader. Take three pages. You can read them in ten minutes. Read them over your, over your lunch break at work. You know... Okay, instead of sitting with that crowd outside, I'm going to go sit in my car and read my three pages. You'd be surprised what you learn reading. Get some leadership books. Get some books on affirmations, on goal setting. Get some books on making money. You'd be surprised what you learn. I am telling you, do it, do it, do it. It is so easy to pick up a piece of furniture off the street that somebody threw out 
sand it down, repaint it, and take it to the flea market and sell it. You'd be surprised what you can do. You can start yourself your own consignment shop or your own thrift store. You have to put in the effort, though. You're going to be like, oh, I really want to do this. Okay, that's going to be a lot of stuff you're going to have to store, and you're going to have to make money in order to come up with the rent. First and last month's rent, just to get into a place. I figure my stores are, what, two, $3,000 a month. You got to make sure you nab enough product that's going to hit that two, $3,000 a month. And you have to have enough customers getting people in there. You got to start using your marketing engineering here. You got to really make up a game so that people will come in. I don't know. Let them throw a dart at a balloon and win a prize. Something. A raffle. Do whatever you have to do to get it started. To get people coming in. You know, we have a little thrift store down where I'm from in Pennsylvania. And they have a free library in their thrift store. So you, you take a book, you leave a book. So that's the whole idea. You can take a book, but you have to either bring that book back or bring another book back. And you keep replacing the books. People love it. They go there all the time for their books. They get free reading material. Same as a library, but, you know, it's actually a good idea. Customers come into the store. They come in, they look around, they go check out the books that they want. You know, there's no signing up form or registering that you took the book or anything like that. You just take the book and, hey, that's what I got. Bye, see you later. You know, it was a smart move. Now, I don't know if I'd said this one in, in one of my videos. I may have already said this, but there was a little girl. I think she might have been about 13, 14, when she started her first thrift store. She was a young girl, and she had a little secret room in her little basement apartment that she set up into her little thrift store. And she went around to all the pizza places and all the stores, and she would tell the workers, she'd come up and say, shh, I got a secret. And, of course, you're thinking this poor child, little girl. What, you know, what? What's the secret? And she'd be like, well, you got to you gotta come to this address to, to, to find the secret. She wouldn't even tell you that was a business. She wouldn't even tell you that it was a clothing store or a thrift store. But she had a secret room. And once you got in there and you'd be like, well, I came to find out about the secret. And they're like, oh, well, you got to you gotta find the secret. It's in here. You got to look around. And it was. It was tucked away, a little door that you could open up, and you had to duck down to go through. And it had all this wonderful stuff in there. It was really cool. It was this cute little tiny room that she had decorated up and made into, you know, she owns a huge thrift store now. It does a ton of money, and I swear she's probably only in her 20s yet. Well, she might be in her 30s by now. But she was like a 13-year-old kid when she started. She did her own thing. And now she owns this huge store with a lot of employees. I'm pretty sure she still goes around and tells people she has a secret. <laughs> Do what you can. Do whatever you can. I can't remember her name. We just loved her dearly. And most of her stuff was like baby clothes and baby toys and stuff like that. She had a little book nook, that kind of stuff. You know, but she did her own kind of marketing brand that she could think of. And she did an amazing job. She just really got the people in there. Nobody knew about this place. There's no signs. There's a sign on the door that said open. That was it. No hours posted. No nothing. You went in. It was like an apartment. All filled with all this stuff. I'm like, what the heck is this? <laughs> she had a secret. Change your life. When you change your life, you can change your stars. 
let me tell you, you have to start somewhere. My goodness, anything, anything, I don't care how small it is, you're going to start dressing better. They always see you in those sweatpants and flannels. I know my hair is always a mess and no makeup on and... You know, I'm here with a bunch of kids and a bunch of dogs, and <laughs> that's okay. But let's say you want to start networking, you're going to have to start dressing up a little bit. Maybe hit up the dress stores and find some nicer clothing. Anything, anything you do will change your life dramatically. It's a step. You have to take the little steps to get to the bigger steps. Keep stepping up. Read those three pages a day. You'd be surprised what does your mind. It changes your thoughts. It change when you read. It don't just it it imports knowledge. All of a sudden, somebody's gonna say something, and for the first time in your life, you're gonna have a quick wit and come back for it. And they're gonna look at you and be like, "Wow, I didn't realize you were that intelligent. That is really good." All of a sudden, you're gonna start feeling better about yourself. You're going to start thinking in different ways. You're going to start getting motivated in your life. You're going to start stepping up to the plate. You will do something with your life. You just got to do it. You just got to do it. One thing at a time. That's okay. Say, oh, I'm so busy. Oh, my goodness. I got all this stuff. I got to work all day. I got to come home. I got to feed the kids, bath the kids, help them with their homework, get them in bed. Then I got to do my shower and I got to clean the house yet. And I got to do the laundry. I don't have time. Yeah. It. If you take a couple minutes out to read three pages, <laughs> I'm telling you, it will change your life and it will make things easier. So the kids are in the bath, bath time. You guys sit there and watch the kids organize the bathroom while you're in there. Sit there while they're in the bathtub. Sit there and read your three pages while they're in the bathtub. It will change your life. Make your list while you're eating dinner. You'd be surprised. You want to start taking some online classes? Get those kids into bed and then sit down, you know, for an hour a night and do your online classes. Any more you can do them anytime, day or night. You'd be surprised where it's going to take you in life. One little thing could be something huge. It could be something really big. One little fruit stand could turn into a market. You never know. I know this Amish family, Lancaster, Pennsylvania. They would always help people out. They were always canning foods. They had a huge garden. They were always giving food to, to people that needed it. Next you know it, they started their own little business where they had people bringing in donations and then other people would show up and pick up the donations and take it home. Now they're not running it around. They're just, it, it, it turned into something. Now they have one of the hugest food donation things. It's like a huge warehouse. They help people out. They, they actually have a ministry on YouTube. I have to find it. I can't remember the name of it, but I'm one of their subscribers. Uh, and they have their own little ministry on there and everything. It's really cool, actually. But, you know, it, it was just an Amish couple, you know. I think it was a couple of brothers that started it, and then the wives joined in and started helping, and... Now it's a huge thing. I think they have their own forklift and everything. You know, things change. You'd be surprised. Start something. Anything you can. It will take you somewhere. If you keep working at it. Say, oh, I did that once. I did it once. Yeah, I really enjoyed it. But that was good. You know, I don't have that time. No, keep doing it. Don't just do it once. Keep doing it. See where it goes. You have to you have to have patience. You have to be able to put in the time anytime you can. So when you're a side hustler or a little 
you know, whatever, your little golden nugget, you have to, you have to put in so much time. You have to make time anywhere you can. You know, I know people in Philadelphia that works three and four jobs. They're always on the move. You know, they got this 40-hour work week, and then they go and they make their cash jobs. They might have to sling fish at the fish market, whatever it is. You don't know. it. Whatever it is, they're doing something. They are doing something. They will keep doing something if that's what it takes to change their life. Don't know how to pay your bills? You be like, I can't start anything. I can't even pay my bills. Maybe pick up some books from the library on budgeting. On how to get out of debt. Buy yourself a little cash journal. This is what I did. And every month I wrote down every bill I had. And how much I owed on each bill for that month. And then the total I owed for the full balance. And I would pay each one a dollar or two more. My medical bills, I think I started out paying them two or three dollars a month just to pay something on it. Yeah, that way I was paying something on it. Once you get started and you just keep doing it, it becomes a habit. And next you know, you go from 13 bills to five bills to three bills. And then you got your house payment and your car payment and that's it. Then you're like, well, how can I pay these all fast? <laughs> you know. Let, let's put a huge chunk here and a huge chunk here. And you keep going until you are debt-free. You keep going. Now, you will always have your electric bill and you will always have your insurance and you will always have your water bill and whatever else, your sewer and your phone bill. You're always going to have these. That's okay. But you're going to be debt-free when it comes to owning your own house, owning your own car outright. You don't want to owe no man no debt. Do not owe other people. You do not want to owe no man no debt. Do not borrow money. You do not need loans. Now, I did take out a loan against my truck after it was paid off to buy my house. I used it as collateral to buy my house. And then I paid that loan off as fast as possible to get it out of the way. The bank wound up owing me money. They had to turn around and pay me because I overpaid my interest. That's how fast I paid it off. I was making double and triple payments whenever I could. I worked extra hours so I could pay that off to become debt free. I owned my house outright. I owned my truck outright. I owned my car outright. I own them outright. I don't own no man, no debt. You got to learn. If you want to get out of your situation, you got to take the step to do it any way you can. I don't care if you have to have a penny jar in the corner and you're putting every little extra penny that you found in the couch into that jar. And then you're going to cash that pen those pennies in and you're going to put them on one of your bills and you're going to start paying it off any way that you can. Tie the first. Always tithe first. Then pay your bills. You'd be, as long as you keep tithing, you'd be surprised. Your life will dramatically change. I am telling you, the more you tithe, the more, the more your bills get paid off faster. You'd be surprised what happens. Sorry, I need a drink. I've been talking so much. I know this is a very, very long video. And I apologize for it. And it's so late in the day. But I want you to get in your head. If you want to make a change in your life, you have to start doing it now. Any way you can. And I know I keep saying it. You read those three pages a day of any book you can get your hands on. I don't care if you're sitting reading children's books to your kids at nighttime. You're reading something. It does something to your brain. Get your diffuser... Hook it up, sit in your little nook, your little vacation spot, sit there, get comfortable, and do something for yourself. Sit there and write in your journal, write your affirmations, write your goals, do something. Your life will dramatically change. 
write down your bucket list. Take two minutes and write your bucket list. And then you put it in a journal. Don't just write it on a piece of paper and tuck it away with the bills where it'll get thrown out a year from now. We don't throw out our list. We don't throw out our bucket list. We don't throw out our goal list. We put them in something. We write a journal. I don't care if it is a five and dime journal that you got from the local thrift store. Start writing in it. Anything that you can. If you have to write your little daily journal to yourself, like, this is what I did and this is how I felt. If that's what helps you, then write it. If it's poetry, then write poetry. It will change your life once you start doing it. You'd be surprised what happened. It's like magic. I keep telling people, when you put it down there, when you actually write it down, it's like sending out little vibes into the universe. And it's saying, this is what we need to get. This is what we need to draw towards her. This is how we bring it in. You need to start writing things down. You need to start doing it. You need to change your life. You know, you have to do something that's really, truly that you're really, truly going to love yourself for. I started a YouTube channel. Oh my goodness, look at me. Think somebody my age going to start a YouTube channel? I did. Some of you did. You know what? I'm doing something to change my life. I'm almost done with my 100-day video challenge. Oh, thank you. Because <laughs> it's been hard. <laughs> I've been having a lot of fun with it, though. So, here's my very, very, very long video for today. I did not want to make this very long. I just wanted to motivate you. I really do something. Tell me in the comments what you've done to change your life. Tell me some of the things you've done to earn that extra cash flow. What your side hustle might, might have been, or is... Tell me what your interests are. Put it down in the comments. Write it down, whatever it is, that's going to give you the passion and the drive to go get it done. I want to see it in the comments. Definitely let me know. I love you, YouTube. You have a beautiful, wonderful day. I thank you for hanging in with me for this long. If you hung in this long, I want you to write sugar drop in the co in the comments. Nope, don't write sugar drop. Write. Ah, uh, let me see. Write challenge me in in the comments. If you made it this in this far into the video, I appreciate you. I love you, YouTube. Have a good night, people. Bye.